Get groceries delivered to your door in as fast as an hour with Instacart. They handpick fresh groceries from your local store and let you shop multiple stores in a single order. Use our link to get free delivery on your first order over $35. Just visit cart.simpsonsiblings.com or check out the link in the description. Hey everybody, this is Sari. And this is Sean. And we're the Simpson Siblings. We converse about Simpsons topics. And we talk about it all the time. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to be a little bit more <laughs> different with what I say. I don't know. And then I don't know what to say back. <laughs> Because it's unscripted. <gasps> Off script. Okay, now we're going to go back to script. But we are talking today about Mother Simpson, Season 7, Episode 8, originally aired November 19th, 1995. Our guest stars are Glenn Close as Mona Simpson and Harry Morgan as Bill Gannon. And I was like, oh my God, because Harry Morgan is also Colonel Sherman Potter from M.A.S.H., but here he is parodying his Dragnet character. And we don't have a chalkboard scene with this one, but we do have the couch gag with them coming in as bowling pins. Yeah. Which is pretty fun. Pin pals. <laughs> Love that name. Yes. All right, so we have the, the nuclear power plant crew doing some cleanup in a national park or something like that. And I love that they... They were, like, taking pictures of Mr. Burns. And, like, the headline is that he's not taking the spotlight for this. Yeah. And then he just lets everyone else do it. Typical Mr. Burns fashion. And Lenny says something that I did not catch until this time I watched it, where he says, half these bottles aren't even mine. <laughs> Which implies that half of his bottles, half the bottles there are his. So... A little bit of a problem there. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing that, Lenny. <laughs> and then, uh, so Homer is standing on top of the mountain with Bart, and he pretends to fall. But you don't know that yet. And there's this back and forth between Lenny and Carl as he progresses down the mountain. It's like, <laughs> oh, now he's landing on these sharp, those sharp rocks. <laughs> and then, oh, but he's okay. And then he falls again, and it's... It's classic Lenny and Carl. Well, I love, too, how much work Homer puts into faking his own death mm -hmm. to get out of work. Mm -hmm. How much easier it would have been just to do the cleanup work. And, and doesn't he say that he spent, like, $600 on the body double? Yep. Oh, my God. And I love the fake out where he goes, well, now we're free to do whatever we want on this fine Saturday morning. And then it shows two kites being flown and it's Marge and Lisa flying the kites yeah. while, while Homer sits on his hammock and Bart just kind of pounds away at the sidewalk with a hammer. Yeah, and you can see like all the cracks that he's been doing it for a while. <laughs> oh, that's great. And uh, Marge has just the best expression when Flanders and everyone comes to the door to kind of wish her condolences. Yeah. We'd like to present our condolences about Homer passing away into death. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, just... keeps, she keeps trying to be subtle with it, but it's not getting through. <laughs> oh, and then we get the, um, the gravestone from Patty and Selma that says, We are richer for having lost him. <laughs> yes. And also the, the newspaper, Local Man Loses Pants. Comma, life. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got the picture of the beavers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's great. So um, all this sort of stuff starts happening because of everyone thinking Homer's dead. Like they cut off the electricity because it was in Homer's name and all of that. And so Homer goes to the, uh, the I don't even know which office it was, um, to get his, to pretty much tell them he's not dead. And um, he says he says something about like his mother is buried at this certain plot. Yeah. Because they tell him that his mother is alive, and so he goes there and and he apologizes to his mother's grave for not visiting her, 
And instead, the grave says Walt Whitman, and we he just completely falls on the ground, yells to the sky, damn you, Walt Whitman. <laughs> ah, and it's the perfect moment. And Homer's reunited with his mom when she goes and visits the grave that was supposed to be his. It's a, like, you awful man, <laughs> get out of my son's grave. It's such a weird backwards way to be reunited with your loved one. Through your faking of your own death to get out of picking up litter. <laughs> That's the Simpsons. Just That's solid writing. That's the Simpsons writing. way. Yep. And I love this moment where Homer goes, I almost always spoil the moment. And a pelican lands on his head and then spits out a fish into his pants. <laughs> and the fish is just wiggling. <laughs> and... Um, and his mom always has sort of like a comforting aspect to her where if he does something where he fumbles it, she's okay with it. She kind of supports him through it. Well, she's known how to reassure because that's not new behavior. Mm-hmm. She's known how to reassure him in the past. Mm-hmm. And we have, I love this little moment, it's really small, where Homer is showing her around the house and he says, well, this is where I put... This is where I put my clothes in this in this uh, cabinet right here. Oh, I have it written down. Mm-hmm. This is my dresser. This is where I keep my shirts when I'm not wearing them. Mm-hmm. And then she goes, "Oh yes, right in the drawers." And it's it's such a supportive like she's. If you try to imagine trying to raise Homer as best you can, you gotta really kind of hold his hand through a lot of stuff, and she does that so well. Just the good motherly affirmations that she gives him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when we have her coming back in to meet the family, it's a whole interesting scenario, too. Mm-hmm. I have written down specifically how anxious Marge is. Yeah. It really, it kind of shows off the governing emotions of each character. So, yeah. Like, Marge gets anxious, Lisa is curious, and Bart is greedy. Like he, he says He's about running the, the math on the back payments <laughs> about all the gifts that she missed for them. And it, it's it's an interesting scene. And I I like this sort of moment where Grandma Simpson connects with Lisa on the doorstep. Yeah. And um she she kinda says, Oh, you you, you used the big word with me. You didn't talk down to me. So she connects with Lisa, and we have Homer trying to get her to pay attention to him. Which, like you said before, we get to see everyone's true emotions and character. Mm -hmm. We get to see Homer's, too. Oh, yeah. And he's, like, doing handstands. Like, Mom, look at me. (laughs) Look what I can do. (laughs) Uh, And then we kind of start to get suspicious of Mother Simpson when she kind of runs inside when the police come by. And Bart finds a whole bunch of fake IDs in her purse. Which I remember years ago, I don't know if it was the first time or it was when I started really thinking about these episodes. Mm-hmm. I was I remember thinking, oh, is she pretending to be mm-hmm. Grandmother Simpson? But, I mean, we figure out what happens later. But yeah. I had a worry that she was more of a con artist and was trying to take advantage of the yeah. situation of, you know, reading an obituary and swooping in. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a red herring where they kind of they kind of send you down that way and yeah. then sort of change direction. So they all kind of um, well, Marge Marge tells Homer not to get his hopes up, um, and t- to originally find out why she left in the first place. And so they all kind of finally go and interrogate with her with questions. And it's finally the thing that draws her out is by threatening to call the police. Yeah. Yeah. And so she finally tells the story. And any time they show little Homer, he just, I love him so damn much. Yeah. He's got that, like, really kind of sweet little voice. I know. And the way he just pronounces words differently Mm -hmm. is so positive. Mm -hmm. 
And I love that. I don't know if they show it yet, but he has a stuffed animal of Poppin' Fresh. Yes. That is so homer. And he goes to sleep listening to a commercial jingle for... Fig Newtons. For Fig Newtons. That's such a homer thing to do. Oh, man. It's so cute. So after putting Homer to sleep, um, she sees... I, and this is something where I kind of have a gap in knowledge here. I don't know much about sports. I don't even know if this is a real sports guy. The guy with the long, flowy hair that inspires her to become a hippie. Yeah. That's sort of like a blank spot in my um, sports history knowledge, which does not exist in my brain. <laughs> I'm like, what sports history knowledge? <laughs> sports ball. Um, but it inspires her to... Blurns ball. Sorry, I Oh, yeah, with the... <laughs> like the giant tarantula. Oh my gosh. Um, so she ends up becoming a hippie and she's protesting Mr. Burns' germ warfare lab. And um, they end up having this huge thing where they set off a gas that's also like antibiotics. Yeah. And it kills all of the germs and ends up sort of swallowing up um, Chief Wiggum before he's actually Chief Wiggum. He's like the hall monitor. Yeah. And it cures his asthma. The, <laughs> Listen to me <laughs> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Which if that's his newer state, imagine what the old one looks like. Oh my God. Asthma disappearing. Acne Still there, but asthma disappearing. <laughs> so uh, Mona makes the mistake where they're all fleeing the lab, and they kind of run over Mr. Burns a little bit, and she goes back and tries to help him, which ends up kind of being a mistake because he sees her face. And I guess, are they able to recreate it from, from like, a police sketch or something? I don't I, I, don't, I didn't really... They had... Because they had an actual photo of her. I never thought about that. Maybe, oh, that might be a plot hole. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that Because he doesn't know who she is, but then they're somehow able to get a photo of her. But yet they also don't know her name. Yeah. So you would think if they were able to get a photo of her, they would at least know her name. Yeah. Hmm. But it's not important. (laughs) (laughs) So once he's able to sort of get people looking for her she realizes that realizes that she needs to run away from home and we have that moment where she kisses homer before she leaves and she's crying and she leaves and homer in the present day says i thought i dreamed that kiss yeah that oh my god that line's like that line's like a punch to the heart oh my god um, and then Mr. Burns ends up seeing her at the post office. And how did he recognize her? Well, there was the poster on the wall still. But she looks completely different, and she's wearing sunglasses. Well, remember, they had that computer aging system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, you're expecting, well, based on our computer aging system, you're expecting something to look, look like her, but different. Uh-huh. It says 25 years older. And it's just screen. a giant twenty. So basically all the computer did was take the present year and subtract the year that it occurred. <laughs> oh, my That's goodness. That's how he knew what she looked like. Yeah. Oh, oh and then I oh, this is one of my favorite little back and forths. Uh, when she's singing, how many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? And then Homer goes, Seven. No, eight. It's a rhetorical question. Do you know what rhetorical means? Do I know what rhetorical <laughs> means? It reminds me of the sarcasm detector. Oh, my God. Oh, Homer. Oh. Oh, I love it. It kind of surprises me how much conflict doesn't happen when she sees Abe again. Like, there's, there's like a little couple seconds of yelling... And then they, there's no fuss anymore, really. Yeah. And Abe just being awkward. <laughs> yes, awkward. <laughs> oh, man. 
Mona Simpson is happy that the spirit of of the 60s is alive with the kids and we get Maggie's little pants yeah. which is just so cute. It is one of it is one of the cutest moments in the entire series. And if you get that on rotation, it goes with just about any song. Ooh, let's we'll test this. Yeah, I I did that with um can't remember what I was doing. I, I pulled that up and just put on several different songs, and it just went perfectly. They end up it, – it's a little weird how they connect all of this. They somehow know to go to the gravesite, and then the the guy says that one of – that there were two ladies there. One of them was a looker, and the other one wasn't, and it ends up being Patty and Selma, who look exactly the same. Yeah. And they, fi- they use that to find out – that Mona Simpson was near Homer's grave, and that's how they can kind of deduce that that's who that was. They're, it's a little... Yeah, and they kind of brush over it really quick. Yeah, it's kind of just... They, eventually they find her, but they don't they don't put that together super well. Yeah. But it's not the central part of the episode either. But we also have a great moment with Chief Wiggum. He's calling in the the APB or whatever, yes. and he's like, "Uh, Chief, that's your wallet." <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Chief Wiggum. Uh, and then we have an anonymous caller calling up Homer, and he tells it, it's almost like a bit of a chilling moment where he comes in and says, "Okay, Mom, how about you take one last look at everyone and come in here with me." Yeah. It is kind of, it's meant to be kind of funny, but it's also a little like, oh God. Um, Tearing away what she just got back. Yeah, and it has happened so quickly. They don't even have a scene where she says goodbye to everyone yeah. other than Homer. Um, and we have um, Mr. Burns coming up with the tanks, blasting Waterloo. <laughs> <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> Smithers. <laughs> oh, Smithers. And um, so Homer and Mona are able to get away um, to the middle of the desert. And they thank their anonymous tipster, who is Chief Wiggum, because she cured his asthma. And he's kind of trying to reveal that it's him. Yeah, but he's like, allow me to work my way up to the chief of police. And he hangs up. (laughs) Yeah, poor Wiggum. Uh, and then, of course, that heartfelt scene where she has to leave, and... and he'll always be a part of me, and then she hits her head. Don't! Yeah. Oh, man. No, this is so sad. And then the the stars at the end, that's, that's kind of one of the most famous Simpsons moments, where it instead of cutting to credits and having the Simpsons theme, it's just Homer sitting on the roof of his car, just staring at the stars after... Mona's dri- driven away and um, that was like a last minute thing that they added Yeah, they weren't originally going to do that but then they had it extend over the credits with that sort of emotional score there's always something about when they have a musical piece mm-hmm. and then where you expect it to break but it keeps going mm-hmm. I think the best analogy I'd have is they've done it a couple times in the Final Fantasy games mm-hmm. where normally like you go into a battle and it breaks into different music mm-hmm. but you get to a really emotional part of the game and the music carries on between the cutscenes. It's when they get to Xanarkin isn't yep. it? Yep <laughs> and, they, and they emphasize that the music plays such a critical role in that scene that mm-hmm. it just has to stay. Yep and that and that this isn't the status quo. This is something different that's happening. It draws attention to it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's something I never noticed either, which is kind of a small detail, but there's cricket noises at the end. No, oh, I didn't and notice yeah, that. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a neat little touch that, because you, you kind of, if you think about what Homer's, what's going on in his head, he's kind of processing all this. Like it's showing the weight of what happened. Well, it shows too that. The audio isn't cut out. The audio is mm-hmm. there, but there's silence. Yeah. Yeah, that he's just he's just sitting there processing all of it and just the weight of what's happened. Yeah. He doesn't just go right back home. He's sitting there listening to the crickets, you know, as his mom left. And it's a good ending. Yeah. 
It's interesting because both this episode and the... Uh, we recorded both of these back-to-back, the um, Bart Sells His Soul and the Mother Simpson ones, and they both have endings that aren't definitely sad, but they're they're kind of bittersweet, whereas it's not a complete resolution, but it's not the worst-case scenario either. That's what I was going to say. The story isn't... It, the story's 90% wrapped up, mm-hmm. and it just leaves you thinking about it. Yeah, and that's what I love about these two endings, is it's not a complete downer ending or a complete joyous ending. It's kind of a mixture, Yeah, and, and that's what makes it great. So that was Mother Simpson, and we're going to kind of piggyback off of this for our next episode. We're going to do another character study. So this will be our second character study episode. Our first one was on Troy McClure. Our second character study will be on Mona Simpson, uh, Homer's mother. She was in some other episodes, so we're going to kind of uh, have an overview of her story and talk about how she fits into the Simpsons universe and how she affects other characters and all that kind of fun stuff. And I like doing the character studies on the non-main characters. Yeah, because... You know, the, the Simpsons has such a varied cast that each one has their own things they bring to the story. Yeah. Yep, and that will be our season finale next time. Uh, we are going to take a break in the months of June and July, so next time will be our season finale. Woohoo! Woohoo! So, we thank you so much for listening, and until then, bye, bye everybody! everybody.